Welcome to today's tutorial, where we're diving into GitLab CI CD pipelines and how to use them for running Selenium tests. First things first, head over to GitLab.com and create a new project, then fill in the necessary details and we're set to proceed. Now, onto the centerpiece, the pipeline editor. Here we'll create a .gitlabci.yml file which defines the stages and scripts for our pipeline. You can find the file in the version control. The first step is specifying the image we want to use. Pro tip, use a specific version number instead of latest for better stability. I'll clean up some example code here and introduce the standalone Chrome service. This acts as a remote server for running our web driver tests. After that, it's just a few lines to install the environment and fire off the tests themselves. Once setup and execution lines are added, we're ready to commit changes. One cool feature, the YAML editor in GitLab checks your syntax as you type, but if you edited the file locally, make sure your syntax is correct before pushing. Alright, the pipeline's running, but hold on. Let's head to the pipeline view and cancel this run for now. We don't have any actual test scripts written yet. To tackle that, we'll clone the repository to our local machine. I'm using Selenium IDE to create the test. Recording the test allows you to follow along, even if you're new to Selenium Python syntax. Our test target is the Sauce demo testing site from Sauce Labs. The test will simply log in and verify an element on the first page after login. Test creation complete. Now, let's open the editor and make some adjustments. First, we need to define the URL for our Selenium standalone server. We can also remove a couple of unnecessary lines. Then, we'll write the assertion to verify the login success by checking an element with the text products. I'll show you exactly which element we're targeting. Now that everything's set, let's push the code to GitLab. Notice how GitLab automatically starts a test run as soon as the code is pushed.
Success. Now, let's add some bells and whistles with HTML reporting. Here, we'll configure artifacts. These are essentially saved outputs stored by GitLab for a certain period. But if you need longer storage, you can set up a script to push them to a service like Amazon S3. The double asterisk ensures all subdirectories are saved too. Another successful build. Now the cool part. GitLab can actually serve the HTML reports directly on their website, so you don't even need to download them. With a single browser test working flawlessly, let's move on to cross-browser testing. I'll head over to my code editor for this one, as it involves a bit more copying and pasting. We'll rename the existing unit test job to Chrome test job, and then duplicate it as a template for other browsers. All we need to modify is the job name and the standalone server name for each additional browser. Now some adjustments to the test file itself. We'll import the OS module to access environment variables. We can use the CI job name from the YML file, for example Chrome test job, to define the appropriate server URL and options for each test run. This is a neat way to manage cross-browser configurations. And there you have it, another successful test run.
Now, let's see what happens when a test fails. You'll typically receive an email notification for failed pipeline runs. As a final bonus, I'll show you how to set up a schedule for running these tests periodically. This is crucial for larger test suites that take too long to run on every single commit. And with that, we conclude our tutorial. We've covered Selenium test integration, artifact preservation, cross-browser configurations, and scheduling. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. If you found the video helpful, consider sharing it with your network. Thank you for tuning in.